Balance is this idea that when you walk into a room, everything feels like it has a place. It's almost like a scale where nothing feels like it's too off balance. And we achieve this by looking mainly at symmetry and asymmetry. Symmetry is the idea of having a mirror image. So this won't necessarily be seen in a whole room, but you can see it in certain elements where you're able to quickly and easily identify pairs of things. Oftentimes we'll be able to really easily identify symmetry within a room through the architectural elements. In a lot of spaces, you'll see that, for example, a fireplace or a large bay window is centered within a wall. So this lends itself really well to create a mirror image by using this architectural element itself and then mirroring um, design elements on either side, whether that's furniture, artwork, or other decor and accessories. Symmetry can really be found in any room type, but it lends itself really well to a bedroom. Bedrooms often start off as a symmetrical base because you always have a bed with one nightstand on either side. So this is a really natural way to focus in and kind of harness that symmetry within a room. Asymmetry is a little bit trickier to harness, but I think it's something that really sets apart um, just a designed room with a really well-designed room. Asymmetry is this idea of creating balance with different elements. So it's not going to be a mirror image, but you're going to find two pieces or more that have this element of similarity, but they're not the same. A good example of this is if you have maybe a sofa with two table lamps, but the table lamps are slightly different. When you're considering this, they're going to have similar um, components of them. Maybe it's the same color, maybe it's a similar height, but the lamps themselves are going to be totally different, which gives you that element of asymmetry. So this example that we have on the screen here has a really dominant symmetrical feel to it. And you get that feel because it does have these two bookcases flanking either side of the wall. And within each bookcase, there's some very similarly styled accessories and colors that gives you this really strong sense of a mirror image. That being said, as I mentioned earlier, you do wanna balance uh, this idea of symmetry and asymmetry. So if we zoom out a little bit, you can see within the rest of the room, we have this sense of asymmetry because on one side, we have the sofa, and then opposite that, we have this pair of um, ottomans to kind of make this space still feel like it has seating on both sides, but it's not a mirror image of each other. Had we put another of the exact same sofa where these ottomans currently are, this room would have become really predictable and felt a little flat. So by shaking this up and including a different seating element, we actually create a space that shows that you know what you're doing and you really understand this notion of balance within interior design. This example that's shown on the screen here is a really great example of asymmetry. You'll see that almost nowhere in this room do we have a mirror image except for those two chairs that are side by side. But the rest of the room, you'll see that we've played around with this idea of asymmetrical balance. So let's look at above the fireplace. We have those two pieces of artwork that aren't the same. One of them has a lot more negative space, a lot more light and white bright colors. And then the other one is a little bit more bold, a little bit smaller that packs more of a visual impact but when you combine these together, you still get this sense of balance. Within this room as well, we, as we talked about before, have this really bright blue jewel tone, and that's balanced with this asymmetrical two white chairs on the other side. So we've talked a little bit about how to incorporate symmetry and asymmetry within a room layout and furniture layout, but I think another area where we really start to see this shine through is through gallery walls. And this is a really great and organic way to incorporate that sense of asymmetry, which can be a little bit tougher to achieve in other ways. We've shown a couple different examples of an asymmetrical gallery wall. And the reason that these are still feeling really balanced is because we're finding art pieces that are similar in color palettes, similar in style, but they vary in size and their frame color, which gives you that sense of asymmetry, but still creates this really cohesive gallery wall. Gallery walls are also a really great way to incorporate symmetry depending on um, the space and kind of what your style is. I think a natural way to incorporate a symmetrical gallery wall is above a bed, but in this case, we've shown it above a living room here. We've just shown two pieces side by side, but this creates this immediate sense of balance rather than having just one big piece of art. We create a little bit of symmetry, a little more dynamic look with these two pieces of artwork side by side. So just like color, balance shows itself in different ways depending on the style that you're drawn to. For example, if you are more of a traditional style, you really like classic, you like farmhouse, you're going to see a lot more symmetry in your spaces just because of the way that those designs tend to come together. On the other side of that spectrum, 
if you identify more with an eclectic or a bohemian, a global vibe, you're going to incorporate a lot more asymmetry that just lends itself a little bit better to that design style overall. So then there are a few other design styles that lend themselves to both symmetry and asymmetry, and you kind of get to just pick your personal preference of which way you want to lean. One example of that is mid-century modern. And in this example here, you'll see that it's a pretty stripped down minimal design, but we've balanced the sofa and the coffee table with this element of asymmetry by putting a floor lamp on one side and balancing that with the kitchen and those bar stools on the other side. We didn't want to make this too much of a mirror. And because it opens itself into another space, we wanted to balance it with the other side by adding a little more bulky furniture with that floor lamp and the artwork kind of leaning towards that side. Another design style that lends itself to both symmetry and asymmetry is this notion of a farmhouse or maybe a modern farmhouse design. Dining rooms lend themselves really well to symmetrical design because you're almost always going to have your rectangular or your circular table with a balanced number of chairs around it. You're going to be able to cut that right in half and see that mirror image. And the way to incorporate asymmetry is by focusing on the area just behind the dining table. So here we see we have a really tall, plant in one corner, balance that out with a bar cart in the other, rather than putting everything on one side or mirroring it. This gives you just a really natural sense of balance uh, by putting something different on either side of the wall there. One of the big things that we look for when we're achieving balance within a space is making sure that we don't go too far on either end of the symmetrical or asymmetrical spectrum. So as a designer, we really start by looking at the floor plan and what elements in this room we cannot change. So we're going to look at those structural elements. If there's a really symmetrical fireplace, a symmetrical bay window, that's gonna be our grounding principle. From there, we're going to incorporate elements of asymmetry to kind of counteract the symmetry. And ultimately, we're always looking for this way to balance this idea of balance by creating an even amount of symmetry and an even amount of asymmetry. Within a space, if it feels like it's imbalanced, take a step back and start to identify wherever you're starting to see symmetry. Look for those moments where you do see a lot of mirror images within a space. And if it's starting to feel like you have too many, remove something. That's a really easy way to create this feeling of asymmetry and to give you that balance right back without making it feel like it's too predictable and too much of a mirror image. On the other side of this spectrum, if your space is starting to feel a little too chaotic, maybe you're not noticing any pairs, start to identify where you see one-offs. If there's just one color, one chair, one pattern, and figure out how you can incorporate a pair for that to give it a little bit more of that sense of balance and giving it a friend within the room to pair with. Often when it comes to balance, we're not trying to make a really strong statement either way. We're not trying to have this really strong symmetry moment or this really strong asymmetrical design. We want it to feel really harmonious. This is a little different from color because with color, we do oftentimes want to make a really strong statement or have a bold accent or pop of color. Balance is kind of the opposite of that. You almost don't want to notice when balance is happening. It should feel very natural and you should be able to just feel very at peace and like nothing is out of sorts within a space. Now that we've covered balance, we've moved into the client's formal living room to show you how to apply this in real life. Within this room, you can see that we have a great foundation for symmetry with the centered fireplace on the wall. To balance this, we've pulled in a little bit of an asymmetrical look with a formal sofa on one side and two pattern chairs to counteract and create this really nice sense of balance. Also on either side of the fireplace, you can see we have this really great fiddle leaf fig tree on one side and into the other, we actually lead into another much more dark room. And even though that's not part of the space, it is something we want to consider. It has a lot of visual weight because it is so dark. So we need to make sure that we balance that on the other side of the fireplace with something that is a little more grand in stature, which is why pulling in this fiddle leaf fig tree works out so well in this space. To start implementing this idea of balance into your own space, it's important to actually look at other people's interiors as well. So to start looking at inspiration images and identifying where you see symmetry, where you see asymmetry, and how you can mimic that in your own space. Once you've kind of looked at a few inspiration images and been able to identify where this balance is coming from, then you can go back and look at your own space, start to look at the structural elements, what can't you change, what's already symmetrical, what's already asymmetrical, and how you can work that to your advantage. Then taking stock of the pieces that you already own and starting to identify patterns and areas where you have duplicates or maybe areas where you just have these really unique one-off pieces. 
how you can use those to create this sense of balance and really harness symmetry and asymmetry with the pieces that you already have. We've created a really great worksheet for you all to capture the key elements of symmetry and asymmetry, which you can find in the resource section of this class. Next up, we are going to dive into scale and proportion.